Snap restoration is about restoring a picture to how it looked originally before it got dust, scratches, fading, colour bleaching and things like that. But once you're doing the work on that, it's very tempting to enhance the picture too, maybe reframe or retouch. Let me show you what I mean. I've loaded a picture into Photoshop Elements and I'm going to follow the work show for the workflow for restoration as I demonstrated in other videos. First of all, I think about whether there are global things that I want to enhance. In this case, the levels and the colors are okay, but I am going to bring up the shade of the shadows a little bit. I go to the Enhance menu, down to Lighting, and to Shadows Highlights. Now, the default for Light and Shadows is 25%, and I'm going to accept that. I'm going to use that. Later on, I think I'll probably change the levels again to give more contrast, but for now, I want to be able to see the background so that I can fix it. So I'll say OK for that, and then move on to the next stage of the workflow, which is to create a duplicate layer. The Layer menu, Duplicate Layer, OK. The next phase of what I do will be working on this top copy of the image. First, an automated filter to apply across the whole picture to remove dust and scratches. Filter menu, noise, dust and scratches. This is the one that I must normally use for removing noise. Leave the radius at one, anything bigger makes the picture blur too much. Threshold depends on the amount of grain in the picture and the amount of detail. 18 is about right for this snapshot from about 25 years ago. So let's leave it at that. That does our first level removal of noise. Now though, we have to go local and we use the tools Spot Healing Brush and Clone Stamp Tool to do that. Spot Healing Brush, let's begin with this and zoom into the picture using the uh, scroll wheel on the mouse to look for areas that need touch up. Well, here are some. Let's make the circle big enough to encompass these areas where there are little marks on the picture that we want to remove. Moving across, there's another piece just there. We'd like to be rid of that. Very good. Looking, zigzagging down there, something on the, on the neck there. We want to just dab that. Looks fairly good there. Okay, so there's one or two spots around here. Let's get those spots and then this big one just here. We can dab around that with a spot healing brush. Maybe make it a bit bigger just so that we can get it to blend into the background. And we carry on through the image looking for these places to improve. I think that we've probably got most of them now. Maybe this piece here in the sweater is a bit of noise. There we go. Okay, so that is our noise removal stage. After this, we moved the eraser to get back some of the um, some of the detail that was filtered out before. Now the eraser does need to be full opacity. I'm going to turn that up to 100 because previously I was using it for for blending, just erasing, partially erasing one layer. Um, but right now, what I want to do is erase completely around the eyes to get back highlights. There we are. You see, it sharpens up the eyes just a little bit. There's, uh, there's not a lot of detail being lost. That's the nostrils I'm just doing. And then we'll go around the mouth as well. Brings up the highlight again there, you see. Now, um, it's always good just to take in fingertips places where there are highlights, like fingernails as well. Always keeping a lookout for whether any noise has been reintroduced in this process. Um, there we are, you see that, that eye there, the highlights coming back. Again, just tracing around the edges of the features to make sure that they're as sharp as they originally were in this recovered version. I think as I went by that, yes, I just noticed another little impairment there. I'm going to get the spot healing brush and just dab up there to get rid of that one. Okay, now 
This is more or less all we do. If we were simply restoring, we would finish by flattening at this stage. So let's do the flatten layer and then flatten image. But I want to reframe and also make the image pop a little more than it is. So I'd like quite a tight framing. Let me pick the crop tool just here. And I'm going to go in with uh, quite a good cropping rectangle. Oh, I see that we set up at four by six inches. That's good. That's a standard size. I like to use standard size as where possible. I'll align this so that it's uh, vertically and horizontally aligned with things in the scene. Now that hand is very important. Um, so we want to make sure it's included, but we don't need all of the head. Probably the bottom hand we need. That's probably, let's, let's take a look at that. Okay, I, I quite like that framing, but now we're, we've zoomed in like that. These bits of window that are left behind are kind of distracting. So what I'm going to do is, um, by illustration of touch up as well, is I'm going to clone some of the curtain to fill in those gaps. For this, we need the clone stamp tool, and we need to choose areas of curtain that will fill in and close. First of all, this little gap just here, I'm going to just take a place very close by and use that to fill in carefully. Now I might need to zoom in even more and get this nice and small so that we, we fill that in. See, I've left a little bit of white around and that's a bit of a problem because it, it stands out. So that should have erased it. Okay, there we are. There's, there's some of that side. And then I want to paint in some more curtains on the other side. So I'm going to just grab a piece of curtain from over here. I press down the Alt key and click to define the source of my copy. And now I'm going to paint that into this area. I'm going to again have to be very careful near the boundaries. And I could actually use, use layers for this. I could um, paint my background quite freely and then use the eraser to carefully erase and uh, make the match up. But because this is such a small area, I'm just going to paint it in like so, trying to follow the line of the foreground. Doesn't matter too much if I take away a little bit of the foreground. Um, but when it gets to the hair, I think I probably do have to be more careful. So we can paint that in. And so this is obviously artificial curtains just here, but it stops that white area from, from showing up and distracting the eye from the main subject of the picture. So I'll just add this in around here. You see, again, I've got a white fringe. I need to come back and deal with that um, because that, that is going to be visible. It will draw the attention. So we need to we need to try and work fairly carefully to make it look as though the, the hair is in front. In fact, this fringe, I think, is exacerbated a little bit because, of course, the hair was backlit before with the window where it was. So we may not have something that looks perfect in the end, but it's right at the side of the picture. So hopefully working on it carefully enough, we will be able to um, give the impression that this background is the same. Now, this isn't strictly necessary, of course, but if we'd left the window in, it would have stood out and such a small area of brightness would have drawn the eye instead of letting you focus on where the real action is in the picture. So if we come out, we've more or less filled in those bits just there. Now we just want to make the image pop a little more. So two ways to do this. On the Enhance menu, we can go down to Unsharp Mask, which is one mechanism for sharpening. And this is, has various parameters down here is how big a difference must be before it is amplified. This again is to avoid amplifying noise in the background. In a way, it's analogous to the threshold that's in the dust and scratches filter. So around about 12, seem to work well most of the time. Keep the radius down if you can. If the picture is more blurry, the radius needs to come up a little bit. And amount, well, amount can be anywhere from about 50 
percent to 150. This is this gives a nice bit of sharpening on a picture that's already quite crisp. So I think that's uh, looking quite good now. Last thing to do though is to enhance the grey levels. So down to adjust lighting. This time instead of shadows highlights, go to levels. Here is the histogram of levels, and you see we've got a little room at the top and the bottom to slide these end stops in to give us more contrast, to make the picture pop a little more. So I'm going to do that. I quite like that. Now there are other things that we could do as well to enhance the colour, but I, I quite like this as it is. I'm going to save this as my enhanced version of the picture I started with.